Welcome to Inside. Today we are chatting with Scott Stulen, Executive Director of the Philbrook Museum of Art. Scott has generously agreed to share some of his experience with us. I'd like to thank you, Scott, for joining us today. Thank you for having me. This is a wonderful museum. Uh, we, we had your predecessor on uh, a bit ago to talk about the Philbrook Museum of Art. How has the museum progressed in, in, in the time that you have taken it over and, and led it and, and made it your own? It's been all of three months now, so it hasn't been a whole long uh, time yet, but I am fortunate to inherit this really wonderful situation because Rand, prior to me, uh, it really was moving it towards a community-focused institution and was changing some of the education programming, the exhibitions that were happening there, and the ability to be able to come into uh, a museum that was not failing or on pause uh, is a really unique situation. So my role was really to keep the momentum going and to take us to the next level. So what I'm excited about is we have a really talented staff. We have an energized audience base there, an energized board, and they were really looking, I think, outside the box to hire somebody like me who's not your typical director um, as well to kind of take it to that next level and to be able to take some risks and really to push that community focus um, even further. What was the thing that made this um, from the from the point of view of the collection and the physical plant that made this intriguing? Well, for me, I wasn't exactly looking for this position right now. I was uh, had only been at the Indianapolis Museum of Art for two and a half years and came in there to start a new curatorial position. So I was the first curator of audience experience and performance in Indianapolis. But I thought that if the right situation opened up um, in a director position, that I would really love that challenge to be able to actually lead an institution aggressively forward in the direction that I was doing with my curatorial department. And I'd been following what Philbrook had been doing and when this position came open, it was that perfect kind of combination of the right type of city, the right type of uh, institution, both from the resources there is the staff, the collection. And then with Philbrook, you have an historic home, you have 23 acres of grounds, so you have a downtown contemporary space. A lot of these different uh, tools in the toolbox that to be able to utilize, to be able to engage audiences in really some creative ways. And I think the biggest thing for me through the interview process is uh, realizing that they really wanted to go in this direction and were willing to take the risks necessary to do some interesting things. And those truly groundbreaking things, not those things like the inside of museums that we think are really big with the outside or you don't even notice, right? Right. <laughs> um, but those things that really are big seismic shifts. and. So for me, it was just the perfect combination of all those things, and I'm excited to have this opportunity. Now, you have a considerable collection mm -hmm. that you are uh, managing. Um, you also bring in works from the outside. We do. Yeah. What is your exhibition philosophy in terms of the mix between exposing your collection um, and also br bringing in other works that people don't get to experience every day? Sure, and it's a balance, and it's also knowing your audience. So we're in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And so we have an audience, and we know that most of our audience is local and regional. So they may not be seeing some of the works that you see in New York or LA, so we have an opportunity to bring in works into Tulsa that they probably haven't seen before. And it's also to balance that both financially and, and also that we have a nice diverse array of exhibitions that we're offering. And I think where we're kind of leaning towards is like, what are our strengths? And we're not the Met. We're not going to be able right. to be all to everybody. We can't showcase the whole history of you art. We also don't have the budget of the Met. We don't. <laughs> or the traffic. And not at all. So we're right now we're actually looking at doing a full rehang of the collection and looking at it more thematic than chronological, looking at ways we can highlight the strengths and also that we have the, the villa, this mansion, right. that's also work of art. There's aspects in that that just haven't been utilized in ways that they could. You know, for example, we have a full three-story pipe organ built into the structure of the home. It's hardly been used. I want to bring in contemporary composers to make things with the organ, and so we can kind of bridge the old with the new and use our resources that we have in unique ways. Um, and I think it's also thinking about how we balance the outside shows that we bring in with ones that we're creating internally. And our focus is going to start to lean more towards bringing in artists that we can commission to work with, more contemporary artists, contemporary artists that are working both with their downtown space and with the villa itself, and also out on the grounds. You know, one thing with Philbrook that is one of its big assets, but as far as an artistic uh, platform has been underutilized, is the gardens. Right. And they're phenomenal. We do have sculpture out there, but we haven't used it as a contemporary art platform. Well, that's going to change. Well, 
for those who are less familiar with the Philbrook, you have a wonderful mansion that over the years was built out into a museum. Correct. But it does have those awkward features that one would not design into a museum if you were designing it from the ground up. Right. Uh, it, it does function very well, though, as a museum. You then also have these amazing grounds, which are a horticultural masterpiece, as well as a, a very fitting um, uh, site for uh, for sculpture. And then, uh, of course, there is Philbrook Downtown. Talk about Philbrook Downtown and, and, and that physical structure and how it's utilized. Sure. So Philbrook Downtown, is a, it's only been open for four years. It's a renovated warehouse, very contemporary space. We have our contemporary collection on display there, as well as the Atkins collection, which is Native American art. And we also have uh, most of our Native collection is in storage down in that facility as well. It is very popular on First Friday, which is a free night. Then the whole city kind of opens up downtown in the Brady Arts District. And we see about 2,000 people coming through on those evenings. The rest of the month, it's been relatively quiet. So our challenge is, is to be able to change that. How, and that part of it is looking at what we're showing but also the hours that were open. A lot of the time where all the activity is happening downtown, we're closed. Right. <laughs> so we're looking at ways that we're gonna be open more evenings and really thinking about who the audience is and how the downtown can be somewhat of a welcome mat for the rest of the collection, the rest of the activities we're doing at Philbrook. It is a younger audience that's coming in there. It presents a ton of opportunities. But we also need to look at um, how we create a better social space there, a more of a programmatic space. Right. And also thinking about the artists that we're showing. So as we're thinking about more contemporary artists, their work is more event-based. It tends to be more public practice, social practice work. How do we create facilities that can accommodate that work, as well as the more traditional work that we're showing, too? Are you continuing to build your collection as well? We are. We actually, I, here at Art Basel, we got a piece yesterday even. So we are continuing to grow the collection. And I think we're looking for- Can you for, tell me what piece? You... I can tell you what piece. So we bought a, uh, the piece is called Wishbone by Carl Handel, who's a, uh, it's a pencil drawing. It's a large scale format of uh, football players. And the key figure is actually Adrian, Adrian Peterson, who plays for the Vikings now, but um, went to school in Oklahoma. So there's a connection there. <laughs> <laughs> but that piece, um, why we really like that piece is that for our audience, it's going to resonate very well. Not only do they know the subject matter, but the amount of labor that went into this piece is a sense of awe in it's a photorealist rendering. But also there's a lot of deeper conceptual things about masculinity into it that are kind of, I like the, how it can be very subtle, how we can talk about some of those other issues. But for our particular audience, it's, it's perfect um, in the direction we wanna go. What are the works that, that you have inherited as the new director? Um, are, are, are really noteworthy. What, what, what works are your favorites? Well, we have, a, we have the Shepherdess in our collection, which is a favorite of a lot of uh, our patrons and also myself, which I really enjoy. We also have a Theaster Gates that was acquired uh, a couple years ago that I was really happy to see that that is in the collection. Um, the Atkins collection, the Native collection, is really rich. and. We have so many It really is one there. of the finest collections in the United States. It is, and we're so fortunate to have that, and I think the depth there, and I think we've just scratched the surface about what we can do with that collection as well. And I think our position, we're really looking at ways that we can support more uh, young, mid-career uh, contemporary artists, too. And one thing that's happened in the last year is that Tulsa Nell has an artist fellowship program. It's uh, in our backyard. We have 20 visual artist fellows. Next year will be another 20 plus a writing fellowship. And having artists from all over the country staying for a year in Tulsa, we're finding ways that we can tap into them in, I think, a much more effective way. And looking at how they can riff off the collection. And I think they're very interested in that. And I'm pushing that we can hopefully have an artist in residence that actually uses the museum as their platform. The museums and the grounds right. as well. Exactly. Well, it's so wonderful to hear about the Philbrook Museum of Art in Tulsa. And thank you so much for your insights. Thank you so much. Appreciate it.